After the incredible success of the Chronograph series watches, including the now famous Watermelon, Studio Underdog are back to try and see if it was all just a fluke. There's a new watch, the Series 2, and it's… different. Let's see if lightning can strike twice. Could you do me a favour and open up watchfinder.com? There's a link in the description below. It's what keeps the channel going. Thank you. If you've been in a deep coma these last few years, first of all, good to have you back. And secondly, you won't have heard of the runaway sensation that is Studio Underdog. Started by watch designer Richard Bentz during lockdown, what began life as a sketch of a watch on Instagram blew up into a fully-fledged business, making one of the hottest and hardest to get watches in the world, the watermelon. Watermelon is usually a word used more in conjunction with fruit than it is watches, which is what made the studio underdog so, um, fresh. With seeds for markers and a bright green and pink colour palette, it was the most exciting thing to happen in watchmaking, since some guy realised he could tell the time by poking a stick in the ground when the sun was shining. And it wasn't all gimmick, because the watermelon and its compadres offered genuine value, excellent design and a properly new take on the format, in such a way that forced Richard to figure out how to make it work as a business. As many as he could make, he could sell. That's amazing. Anyone would love such success. But to paraphrase Mike Tyson, everyone thinks they're a great watch designer until they've got to do it all again. And you can imagine that for Studio Underdog, that was going to be as easy as sellotaping butter back together. But it had to come at some point. I could whip out the cliched second album syndrome, but to be honest, the watermelon was such a landmark moment that this is closer to second coming syndrome. Things have moved on from those halcyon days of nothing to do but browse Instagram and buy watches. Everyone's neck deep in work again, trying to figure out how to pay for all the stuff they bought. So it seems appropriate then that Series 2 is a field watch. Why? Because a field watch, created for use on the battlefield, and not so much for herding sheep or setting up trestle tables, has but a single purpose. Tell the time without breaking. No fancy whiz bangs or doodads, just good old fashioned time, just like granny used to make. Really, the field watch came to be because standing up to your knees in a muddy trench just didn't feel like the right vibe for a pocket watch. A smaller watch worn on the wrist was less likely to get damaged and easier to read. They were built to last as long as the soldier wearing them, usually longer, packed with redundancies like fixed bars and single length straps, so if one bar broke, the watch wouldn't wander off. They were dustproof, shockproof and waterproof and really turned the tide on trends back home in a direction that would go on to put Rolex on top. But can you imagine if Studio Underdog just made a field watch? Like, just a field watch. With a black dial and three hands and a small rugged case and nothing else. Well, you'll be pleased to know that even practicality can be fun. And no, I don't mean like when your parents let you wash the car with water pistols to trick you into doing chores, but actual, genuine Studio Underdog fun. But this time, it's not just about what you can see on the surface, because the real party trick of the series too goes more than skin deep. Let's get some necessary specs out of the way first. This is a 37mm watch. That's small, but then the first Studio Underdog watch was small too. It won't be for everyone, but it's well in keeping with the style, and for me, just the right size before it gets too small. You can't really try them on, but if you could, I think you'd be surprised how quickly it looks normal. Thickness is just 9.8mm without the domed crystal, 12mm width, so it doesn't feel like a bottle cap. The proportions come courtesy of a Salita SW210-1, which the most enthusiastic of you will know is a manually wound movement. Yes, Richard is embracing the full spirit of the field watch because this one, like the chronograph, you have to top up with juice yourself, in this case every 42 hours. Water resistance is at 100 meters, be a bit of a crap field watch without it, 
and it's got a polished bezel and crown with a brushed case middle. The view from the back isn't entirely without charm, but it doesn't quite have the impact of the hand-wound seagull of the last watch. And that's it. It's a field watch. What more did you expect? But wait, there's more, because Richard has exercised every designer's need to let you know he's a designer by reimagining the entire genre. Look close and what you once happily thought were numbers printed straight onto the dial aren't. They're actually printed onto a piece of sapphire which floats just a little way above the dial. The two tiny screws left and right of centre is how it's affixed. And that gives the watch a visual that really only you, the owner, get to appreciate. You know those holograms you used to have as a kid? And now the only one you're allowed to enjoy is the little one of a bird on your credit card. Well, remember how when you moved somehow so did it? This watch is the same. Because the markers are printed above the dial, the shadows they cast move separately to the numbers themselves, and so you get this subtle parallax effect that makes you stop and think, Richard, you sly old dog, you truly are a talented designer. Because he is. It's so subtle and yet so impactful. Like you know how pistachio flavour doesn't blow your head off like bubblegum does and yet it's so much nicer. And of course you get to have some fun with it if you want to. If you prefer your mini disc collection arranged alphabetically and your favourite author is dictionary, then you can choose from the midnight black dial and a full moon white dial. But if you're the kind of person who deliberately picks different shades for paint by numbers and you eat the core of your apple just so people know how edgy you are, then there are two great colour options as well. Stephanie Blue, I see what you did there, and Pink Lemonade. The former has orange hands and the latter blue, which any good designer will know are contrasting on the colour wheel. All seems very Studio Underdog, but maybe not the next level Studio Underdog we were expecting from the Series 2. Well, turn off the lights a minute and you'll soon learn never to doubt the creative mind of Richard Bentz, because aside from the midnight black dial, which just gets glowing hands and markers, the others all have full loom dials. The full moon white dial goes greeny blue with the hands matching. The Stephanie blue is a blue blue with the hands glowing in orange. And my favourite, pink lemonade, glows bright yellow like a radioactive sour sweet. And not only that, but when you've been outside and you come back into the gloom, where it's not so dark for the loon to take over, you get this halfway house that makes your watch look like it's about to birth an alien egg. So yeah, Studio Underdog's tricky second album is an absolute banger. The first one was fun with its poppy hits that stick in your head. This one's getting experimental. I wonder who Richard's Yoko Ono will be. What do you think of the Studio Underdog series O2 Field and how do you think it compares to the previous chronograph? Let me know in the comments below. Please do like and subscribe as well and check out watchfinder.com for all your watch buying, selling and trading needs.